It was authorized by the legislature in 1947 to permit the commissioner's courts of any counties to hire or name a road supervisor or a licensed engineer to supervise all of the road building and maintenance in a particular county. The commissioners would then serve merely as a policy-making body. There be, wouldn't be four sets of crews, there'd be one crew, one set of equipment. Uh, it was adopted by several West Texas counties in particular uh, as far back as 20 years ago and more. and It's proven highly successful, meaning according to the county judges of some of those counties, a saving of 25% in the cost of road and bridge building and maintenance. There is no doubt that the roads have to be maintained. There is also no doubt that the large expense in maintaining roads involves equipment and labor. But the number of roads in the county is decreasing. According to a report in 1970 prepared by now Assistant Planning Director Murphy Kleiser, there were 1,408 miles of county roads in unincorporated areas of the county in 1945. In 1970, there were only 716 miles of roads in unincorporated areas of the county. In other words, more roads are now in the city, and the county commissioners are running out of roads to maintain. In the unit road issue, several questions come to mind. Does the county need the four precinct operations? Could one county administrator, an engineer operating from a central office, oversee all the county road needs? Do you need an expert to build roads? And would the unit road system save the taxpayers money? Mr. Commissioner, would you give us your stand on the unit road system and why you feel the way you do? Well, for one thing, I think it's like a lot of things. It sounds good on the surface, but as a practical matter, it simply doesn't work. Uh, when I first came in office, uh, I wanted to explore some of the problems of county government as a businessman would. And uh, I made a comparative analysis for a year and a half. And uh, at the end of that time, I, I came to the conclusion that it simply wasn't cheaper, it was a less effective, and uh, it would end up in just a bureaucratic mess. And uh, I changed my position on it, and that was back in about 1970. Well, those who say that it would save money in equipment and even labor, uh, you feel they are wrong then? Yes, I do. Uh, one, it, uh, I've heard some wild and irresponsible statements made to the news media that we would save a a half a million dollars a year alone in, uh, in purchasing equipment. Why, that's ridiculous. Our budget's only $50,000 a year, and uh, it just simply doesn't hold water. You take, if you had to move someone from downtown all the way out to Grapevine or all the way out to Benbrook every single day, well, you'd spend half your time traveling. Of course, I've supported this thing for the last three or four years. I think it's an answer to the taxpayer's problem of paying taxes for duplication in county government. We spend uh, millions of dollars over the, uh, a few years on equipment. If we consolidate this equipment and use it uh, specially placed on a, on a uh, system of, of programming in Tarrant County, I think that we could probably save a lot of money for taxpayers. I think that's a fallacy, and the reason that I do is because uh, the commissioners uh, two years ago appropriated revenue sharing funds and in those funds, we bought heavy equipment. And that equipment now is shared equally by all the commissioners. Uh, all of the commissioners now have uh, the present equipment that they need. They operate real well under this system, again, I say. And uh, I think that uh, the cooperation, again, is there. Uh, I see no need for a change. You can look at all this equipment we have here set and idle. And regardless of what they say, you can check their maintenance departments, and they have idle equipment set just like this because you don't use it maximum get maximum use out of it i think it brings about a lot of bureaucracy if you want to know the truth uh well uh who, i think mr anderson says that uh, uh the reason i th i say that is because uh, uh, i think it would become a an original and eight copies on no matter what we did i think people would in the suburban areas would get the uh, would not get proper benefit. They pay county taxes just like anybody else. And, uh, uh, well, what about those who say that it would become too bureaucratic, that uh, one person would have more control than necessary and the people never would have an elected official to go to? 
Well, they, they would have the same elected official to go to that they have to go to now. Uh, right now, in areas where we have our public works department and where we don't work in maintenance, uh, we have a consolidation of services the same way. Uh, when we want something do, done and we get a call on something that's not working right, well, we go to the individual in charge of that department. And usually he sees our way and, and goes with us on it. Do you have any idea how much money could be saved in equipment and labor alike uh, under, under the unit road system? Well, out here, I would just estimate that we have between, uh, you know, with prices going up every day, it's hard to say, and we have some older equipment, but uh, we have between a quarter and a half million dollars tied up in taxpayers' money. And we could work just as efficiently with half of that in each of the four commissioner's precinct garages. I can see difficulties in it. Uh, the way the system would be set up at this time would be under the Department of Public Works. And I can see it's uh, very uh, friendly that if uh, uh, three commissioners uh, would happen to get maybe a crossways with the other commissioner, they could keep him from getting anything done in his precinct. I can see nothing whatsoever wrong with it, and I don't think any of the arguments used against it are valid. I see nothing wrong in particular of getting a professional licensed engineer to oversee all of this work. It's very, be very helpful to the future of this county. When you say professional licensed engineer, you, I guess you're implying that the current commissioners aren't engineers. Well, I wouldn't imagine uh, that there's been a licensed engineer as a county commissioner in the history of this county or possibly Dallas County either. Uh, maybe there has been, but I don't know of any of them. I, I think the commissioners are very interested and uh, direct about what they want to do. Uh, and I think under the circumstances, they probably do a pretty good job. But we could certainly do a better one. Uh, yes, uh, the present system that we now have and enjoy, I think is, uh, is acceptable. I think it's uh, the proper manner in which to operate under. Uh, I'd like to say that we have now what I would call a modified system of, of roads, and, and this represents a cooperation between each of the county commissioners. I think, I think the job that we're doing right now is good. Fourteen counties in Texas now have a unit road system, which is to say they all have one principal garage, one set of equipment, and one group of employees to maintain the county roads. Sixty percent of those counties responded to a survey and all of them said that they were completely satisfied with the system. They had no reservations, nor did they feel they could produce the same level of output under the precinct system. Any county has a legal right to create such a system under the 1947 Optional Road Act, and a constitutional amendment drawn up especially for El Paso and Tarrant counties gives those counties even more authority to consolidate. Why, why doesn't Dallas or Tarrant County have it now since, you know, it dates back to 1947? I think there are a number of reasons. Probably uh, politics is one reason. Uh, some of the uh, commissioners feel that probably they will lose some political clout because they won't have the large uh, staffs and road crews uh, in order to help them in political campaigns. That's uh, one of the charges that's made against it. Well, I think that's a fallacy also, and the reason I think that is because uh, uh, from my operation, I have 30 men employed, and uh, we certainly made no power play out of it whatsoever. Well, of course, it, it's uh, it's political. First of all, uh, they have between 30 and 40 employees uh, that get active in campaigns every year, regardless of what's said, they do. Uh, we hope that civil service would remove some of this, but it's it's taken some of the bite out of it. But still, come election time, they're out there campaigning. Uh, when you have 40 or 50 employees and they have uh, families and their families have families, it, it, you, you uh, wield a lot of power. And uh, they had rather rely upon this power to get reelected, I think, than worry about the taxpayers' dollars and be uptown working where we're spending 10 times what we're spending out here. And where instead of going out and playing with some equipment that they don't even know how to operate and go out and fill a chug hole that costs uh, 20 cents, a man being paid $20,000 could be uptown, possibly saving a few more million dollars. Uh, Commissioner Richardson is uh, at this time very strong for it and is advocating it, and I would hope that uh, before he and I go out of office that we will be able to get one other commissioner to vote with us because the uh, taxpayers certainly do need the help, the relief. And uh, besides that, however, uh, it's, I think it would mean uh, more efficiency, 
uh, as well as a reduced cost. It will not save money. It just sounds good. But I have, I have really studied the thing, and if, by George, if it would save money, I'd be the first one to support it. How do you feel the other people have been misled in the thinking that it would save money? Well, the only ones that have really cried for it are people who have been defeated in public office, and, and their, their ideas have been rejected by the voters, so I really don't pay a whole lot of attention to them.